And we're back to the Philly Escape Pod. Down a man, but you know, this is a this is a draft special. We're here with uh, Snacks and Belco up at the top, and uh, we got we got Brits on the recording. So uh, we're here to kind of do a, a little bit of a draft special with everyone, uh, just to kind of get some thoughts out there with some brews, you know, and get uh get what we're going. So we are back. All right, so fellas, draft's coming up, right? Woo! We're you know. I think we're all excited. You know, I think prior prior to this, you know, we, we're talking about some draft strategies. So I think uh, we'll make that our focus. And then if we have some time, you know, we'll talk some Sixers playoffs too. I, I think it's an exciting time. You know, we had a we had a good series, good series sweep, and you know, we're we're preparing for you know what's next, right? You know, it's a one game at a time. So let's get into it, man. Let's let's go into the draft. Um, you know, we're in a good position this year, fellas. You know, we're we're rocking Great two. Spot. Yeah, two first round picks, right? You know, no, you know, we don't have to, you know, move up the board. Like, you know, if we have to move up the board to get someone, you know, that's not what we're really looking at. You know, I think we're, you know, there might be a couple scenarios where, you know, we might we might trade down, get more value, get more picks, right? You know, within, I think I think we don't have the depth of the picks this year, but we do have some, you know, we're in a very interesting spot with a couple of the picks. So, um yeah, I guess if we want to start out with maybe looking at the the Eagles' first pick, right, and you know some scenarios where, you know, how he you know maybe makes a move up and down the board, or you know what what are we thinking here? So, go ahead, I just wanted to, I just wanted to go off and say, um, I felt like we ended the season um, on a real down note with that Super Bowl. You know, it sucked it sucked losing the Super Bowl, and we knew that we we're going to have to pay Jalen, and it felt like. Potentially, our future was not going to be um, as easily. It, w- it wasn't going to be as easy to put this team together as it had been the previous year. And I just think um, it's nice that Jalen's contract was put together in such a way, and the off season went to went uh, in such a way that I feel like we are potentially um, going to be an even better team next year than we were the previous year. I didn't. Re- I didn't. I honestly didn't think that could have been the chance, been the case, and I'm just happy that it is. Um, for this pick, like I, I don't know. I thought, like I, I'm just very happy. So I think that uh, <laughs> for this, <laughs> sorry. So for this pick, originally my thought was, uh, I don't know, Bijan or Bust, baby. Are you kidding me? Like I think I don't know. I thought that I thought that. Originally, maybe we should go defense, and I really do think that we could go defense. I think Christian Gonzalez and I think Devin Witherspoon would be great picks. I think we could potentially um, retool cornerback. I, I don't think cornerback's like as much of a need right now since we have. I think I think we're like five deep at this point that we could really go. But I think getting that like lockdown talent because like we no we we don't have any backup for Slay or for Bradbury when their contracts are gone in like a year or two. So I think it would be good to get like that high level talent cornerback that we I feel like we never are able to draft. Um but obviously Jalen Carter would be a great situation. Um I just don't, I just do think it would be nice to add Bijan to the offense. I think he would open it up. Um okay. add another okay, level so Jackson, to the backfield. Jackson, let me let me ask you this, right? So, you know, I think in years past we we've done you know, like we've, I feel like Howie has learned to prioritize talent over need, right? Because I think we've seen in years past where it's been, we draft for need and then we don't, we might end up with a decent player, but then, you know, maybe we don't draft the best player, right? And mm-hmm. then a couple of years down the line, you know, we, that guy morphs into, you know, what is a top 10 position player, a top 10 player at that position. Right. And then we're all thinking, man, what if, right. So like, yeah, you know, are we, you know, are we really, you know, are we kind of doing that same thing here with Bijan or, you well, know, I, and I, and I, under, I understand the stats. I understand he, like he's, he's a very, very good running back. And if there is a running back, you spend a mid to early first round pick on it's him. Right. But given we have that back in second round pick, right. You know, maybe, and, and you know, the way NF, the NFL values running backs, right? Like maybe there is a case for, okay, let's take the best player available regardless of position. And if that's Bijan, fine, right? But like, it, I think when you look at the top end of that, like we have a top 10 pick, you know, if one of those, if one of the D, like a Jalen Carter slides down, right? Or maybe the the kid out of Texas Tech, Tyree Wilson slides, or even if Peter Skaronsky is available, right? Like we, 
the Eagles' philosophy is to build through the trenches, right? Like, that's how we win. So I, I totally agree with you um, that um, we should go talent over positional need because, like, that's how we end up with Marcus Smith, you know? It's just <laughs> – and he's and I think he's not even in the league anymore. So it's like we don't want that. We want somebody who's going to be on the team for, like, 10 years plus maybe as a star. And I think – Potentially, though, like from comps that I'm hearing, or like honestly, I don't know. I haven't watched too much Bijan Robinson tape, but from what I hear, he is like maybe not the best ever at a certain skill, but like he's a plus 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 in every single thing, like balance, uh, power, everything. And I think, uh, I don't know, I think I heard like that's a uh, uh, a big comp for like Ladanian Tomlinson. I don't know. I think if we, if he was like Ladanian Tomlinson, you add him to this offense. I don't know. I just his receiving like ability out of the backfield, his power, his elusiveness. I don't know. I think that that would really just like take our RPO to the next level. And I don't think that is. Um, I don't think I'm just saying like I like I understand it would take the RPO to the next level, but I don't think. I still think even though like it fits a need, I think he could potentially still be the best talent available, especially if Jalen Carter's gone at that point. Like I think I think right. take Jalen Carter I, if he's there. I think take Witherspoon or Christian Gonzalez if they're there. But if not, like and potentially I know we're gonna talk about some other scenarios. I would prefer if we just like traded down and then drafted um Bijan. I think that would be ideal. Yeah, I think well, I think there's three scenarios and Brits, I'll have you jump in after this, yeah. but like I think there's three scenarios for us, right? Like we we stay, we pick best talent available, right? And best talent available, like, two, we stay, like, if we stay at the pick, pick best talent available, and then if it matches the need, I think it slides into option one. Three is we trade down, right, depending on how the first nine picks go. Um, Jackson, to your point, right, I think if we trade down to, like, a mid, to, like, like the T like mid T or to a teen first round pick or a late 20 first round pick and Bijan is sitting there, dude, game on. Right. Like I, I think that like if we flip down from 10, get to a, like a teen first round, first round pick, and then also obtain some, obtain, obtain a pick or two in the second round game on. Like I'm absolutely okay with that because I think we're like the J to your point about the Jalen contract, we're not going to see the effects of that. Right. Until, you know, he is getting paid the high, he is getting paid that amount, right? And then we have to find talent on rookie deals, right? To oh. where it can still plug the gaps. So like that's that's what I'm worried about, right? And like that's why I want them to trade back, right? So they land potentially a guy who's a lot who's like in most drafts the top ten pick, land him at fifteen, get him because the, the contracts are staggered to where like the later you're drafted in the first round, the less guaranteed money you get, right? So when Jalen yeah. hits that deal. Dude, you still got talent. It's just on under. It's just on a below market contract. Brits, I know you want to come in here for a sec. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, the way I look at this draft is like a little bit different than the last couple drafts, especially, um, I'd say like a 2020 draft. Because like the 2020 draft, I feel like we were like, you know, everybody was disappointed, and we thought we had the plan of you know who we're gonna get, and then it just goes out the window. But the Eagles just lost the Super Bowl. We haven't been in this scenario since 20, 2005, I think. Like, it's a weird yeah, scenario. Five. It's a weird scenario that we haven't been in a long time. Like, when we won the Super Bowl, it's like, you know, who cares what we draft? You know, like, like we just won the Super Bowl. Like, just get a lineman, get us some depth, whatever. But now it's like, okay, we just lost the Super Bowl. We kind of need to, like, if we don't go back, it's almost like a disappointment. So yeah. we have to make sure that the team is, like, better right now. So I think that's the reason why I'm pretty all in on Bijan. I'm not all in on him. I think it's like a, you can make a very smart pick at like taking like an offensive tackle or something like that, offensive lineman. Um, maybe trading back and then like seeing who's there for that. Um, getting going going up and grabbing Jalen Carter is another uh, thing that's kind of been catching steam. Uh, that's like the last couple of days I've seen. They might we might try to go up. And see How he's been looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's another huge one. That'd be a great. He, he's a going to start immediately. Yeah. Um, Bijan would start immediately, obviously. Um, probably. Like, like obviously, you know, he's going to be on camp and everything, but um, that's kind of the extent that he would be a full play guy. 
Um, so I'm pretty happy with just sitting at 10 and then uh, and Bijan seems like he's going to be there and just getting him just because I think I think he is like uh, a top tier um, running back and he is going to not like have any struggles because like I know run, running backs are weird you're not sure like how they're going to come mm-hmm. into the league it's like it's way different than college um, but I also think that he's a good person and like I feel like like that's a huge thing <laughs> When it comes to character and stuff like that, like I think he'll mesh with. It. I've been watching a lot of videos and interviews with him. I think he's like a good person, and I think we have like a lot of guys on the team that are very similar to him. So I think he would kind of fit right in, and it also seems like he wants to come here. So he guys, really uh, wants to be an Eagle. Yeah, so I think he that's does. like those are all like intangible things that like might not matter that much, but like as a fan, I kind of like it. Can I tag? Can I tag on to that a bit? I wanted to um, add a little bit to uh, respond a little bit, add a little bit to that, and respond to your point, uh, Harsha. Yeah, go for it. I just think that, um, like with ha- with Jalen's contract, I don't think it really goes above like twenty five million dollars for the next like four years. Right. And I think we supposedly have almost everybody on offense except for our like offensive guard, um, under contract yeah. for that entire like I think next two years at least, maybe more. And so I think with Stoutland being as good as he is, and with Jurgen's ability to slide to guard. We might not need as much depth, or like I, I just feel like we could potentially pick up a guard, um, on like, in a later round, or even potentially next year, and just hope that we don't get an injury on offense in the offensive line this year. Um, and I just th- the reason I was thinking maybe Bijan over, um, like a defensive player was just purely because we had I felt like a really good defense. Maybe it was just Gannon sucked, but it seems like we might just need to outscore everybody. And I think with Bijan and Penny, because like Penny's averaged over six yards a carry the past two years. I think having both yeah. of them in the backfield with Jalen, we could potentially have the best offense like ever. I mean, we already have the best offense coming off of last year, so it's like, it, and to improve it is nuts. To improve the running game, and, and Miles Sanders had a hell of a game last year. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously that, like I think people are just kind of gonna say like, oh, our offensive line wasn't that good, and maybe that is the case. But just see what what like what could B. John Robinson do with that offense. You know, so so guys, let me let me ask you this, right? If we could land, right? And I'm looking at this right now, like understood, right? Like we we might need to outscore pe- outscore these people. Would you guys be okay if, let's say, a I'm looking at this right now. So let's say we trade back from ten, right? We land. Uh, I could, let's say we land sixteen, right? Okay. We, we get sixteen to twenty. They land Bijan there, right? And then with 30, we get a defensive player. Or or the other scenario is we land the kid from Alabama, Jamir Gibbs, who's been picking up a lot of steam at 30, right? You know, he's – I think there have been some draft boards that are saying he's actually ahead of Bijan Robinson. You land him. I and then that. you take – yeah, you take an edge rusher at 10, right, because we lost Javon Hargrave this year and – Fletch and BG, they're, you know, they're not getting any younger, so you're going to need a guy to, you know, get in behind them and really learn how they do it, right? Like, and, and this is what I'm saying, right? As much as we want Bijan Robinson to be an eagle, I just don't want us to fall in the same trap of, okay, we want this guy. He, he's probably he's really really good. Don't get me wrong, but we overdraft him, right? When we, there's, you know, a like a an equal or even better running back sitting at thirty that we can take. I mean. Tough to say because Bijan Robinson, I feel like is like the if there's gonna be a running back to get, like obviously like that that the Bama kid is like getting some talk about and stuff like that. But I, I guess you never know. But if you're gonna draft a running back in the first round, might as well be the guy that's like supposed to be the best. I think if we don't draft Bijan Robinson, we don't even draft a running back. We don't need one technically. Uh, you know, so it's like interesting. if we don't get Bijan, I would Thanks, almost Charles. be okay with just. Then just go for depth like we usually do, kind of thing. Just like a cornerback mm-hmm. or even like a you know defensive best player, time. stuff like that. Best player available. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what. Time. Yeah. That, that's what. My question really is just I could to be you, wrong on that, By the way, like I, that that Alabama kick could be great too, but like you know that's mm-hmm. just what I'm thinking. Yeah, Harsha, right. how is Gibbs uh in the receiving game? Because I just I like I think I he's very good. Very good. Like there, like there are drafts. So I was reading the draft boards last night on the running back stuff. Like Jamir Gibbs, 
is gaining steam as RB1 in this class on some teams' draft boards over B. John Robinson. Okay. Dude's from Alabama. So, like, he's obviously pro-ready. He's been in yeah. the receiving game. Like, he could side. definitely make an impact. So, man, so I see, see, I, uh, I really wouldn't, I really wouldn't mind getting Gibbs. I think that, uh, we just need, um, like a really good receiving back out of the backfield. Like, I think, honestly, like Joe said, our running back depth is honestly pretty, pretty good right now. I think Penny's really good. I understand he's injury prone, but hopefully he doesn't get injured. I think Gainwell had like a really good end of the year, especially in the playoffs. And, um, Trey Sermon is, is like a first round talent. So, like we could even bring him up off the the practice squad. Yeah. The yeah. rumor is that we're gonna involve Gainwell more this year. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you put a three or four headed monster of like Boston Scott, Gainwell, Penny, plus a potential draft pick, right? Like I think that yeah. solves your the and you still have Trey Sermon too, right? And I think we've yeah. learned that the way we run, we need to keep guys fresh and rotate, right? So yeah. you're running a four headed monster like that. I mean game on. But I, I think that protects Jalen as well. I, I would also say that if we, you know, given the holes on the defense, right, like I think it seems like if, if we do trade back into the teens, you know, maybe we look at adding a defensive chess piece, right, whether that be an edge guy or Jackson. I know you mentioned Brian Branch. Like he's – I've seen him go anywhere between like the teens oh, to like the late I'd love now. a safety. Yeah. Um, I think some safety talent could be in play for Howie. Just – Again, best player available, right? I think you have you have plenty of options at ten, but I think like we said earlier, right? It's the fireworks really start at three, right? With Jonathan Gannon and company in Arizona, what they decide to do if there's a team that and you know it's circa like let, let's think about to like the 2017 draft, like there could be a, a shadow team lurking that wants to jump up and take their QB of the future, right? I mean, look at what happened with Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes. Um, I mean, you're, you're just looking at – there's – at three, again, is where the, the fireworks start, right? Like, if the well, team makes a move up, then everybody else has to reach off the draft board. Yeah, can you, can you sort of go through, like, the uh, like the situation with, like, what could happen? Like, who – like, I know you're saying the QBs could slip and Levis could potentially drop past uh, us and we could uh, le- leverage that to get, like, uh, somebody to trade up to us or something? Yeah, one of the scenarios that's been out there, right? So I think right now, one and two – um, one Bryce Young looks like it. Um, I think a lot of people, I think there's a lot of smoke coming out about that. Houston, it looks like 75 25, it's going to be CJ Stroud. Um, okay. w- which makes sense, right? Because I don't think Davis Mills has really shown that he's the guy. Um, no, if you're going with Davis Mills, you're delusional, I think. Yeah. And the other, <laughs> yeah, Mark, like he just hasn't shown that he's the guy. Um, at three, if Arizona stays, they're not drafting a quarterback. Kyler, they're, they're committed to Kyler Murray. I mean, Kyler Murray's a great before, quarterback. Yeah, they, I mean, they have done it before with Josh Rosen, but Josh Rosen just wasn't good enough, so that's why they went with Murray. Um, so, so at three, if those guys decide to go edge rusher and keep the pick, then you look at four, right, which is Indianapolis. There's been some smoke about Anthony Richardson. Levis or Anthony Richardson goes there. So I think for argument's sake, we'll say Anthony Richardson goes because they, okay. they love his tools and stuff. So then Levis... There hasn't been much talk of Seattle taking him. I don't think they do. Uh, then you look at Detroit. They're not going to take a quarterback. I think they're committed to Jared Goff for now. Raiders, I, th- I mean, they just signed Jimmy G this offseason, so maybe they take a look at Levis. I, I, I doubt it. Um, then you look at – I'm just looking at the order right now. Falcons, they look like they're committed to Desmond Ritter. I also – I mean, my working theory is that there's some smoke with Lamar Jackson, so we'll say – um, Bears are obviously committed to Justin Fields, so you, I think, if if one of those guys gets past four, like the three four slot, they he could, could slide a while. He could slide a while, right? And that's that's the situation. I think Howie Roseman is like, okay, like if if one of those guys slides to ten, right? You're looking at, I mean, maybe Tennessee. Tennessee could Tennessee would also want that too because then they could be like, okay, the Eagles aren't going to pick, but then the Eagles could potentially trade with, like, um, there's been some smoke about the Pats wanting to come up and replacing Mac Jones. I don't think that's the case. I think the team that's a dark horse right now to come up for a QB if he slides to 10, you're looking at the Commanders. I could see that happening. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, because they, like, they need a QB. Um, I just don't know where they would slide. Because... What about, like, Vikings? 
The Vikings were another one. That was like the, the mocks earlier this week were saying the Vikings would come up and swap with the Eagles. And I could see that because Kirk Cousins is on a contract year. They're going to need a guy there. If, that I mean, would be one. I feel like he's starting to get old. You don't want to. You don't want to sign Kirk to another or Kirk to another well, Kirk contract. That's that's the <laughs> that's the league that the the QB union in the NFL is very strong. The I would say the dark horse right now, the Commanders are a team to keep an eye on. Um, the Buccaneers as well were mentioned yeah. as another team because they need a quarterback, right? They've got some pieces there. Levis could potentially whoever like. Out of the four quarterbacks, whichever one slides past ten, I think we could see some traction there. Um, well, it's kind of—I think it's kind of crazy right now. There's, uh, I think, less franchise quarterbacks in the NFL than there have been in a long time. Well, yeah, I mean, you have—I mean, Brady retired, Brees has retired recently, Rivers is gone, Eli just went, Big Ben. I mean, for a long Matt time, Ryan. Down, that's, Matt Ryan's another one. Like, Bill I mean, Rivers. Been, there are guys that we grew oh, up wait, with. Who just like. You, uh, he might be with. He might be a free agent now that I think about it. Yeah, it might be. I don't think he's on the Colts. No, definitely not. Um, he's a free. He's still a free agent. Colts have to be getting a quarterback, right? That yeah. There's been they way too one. much smoke. Yeah. They've been, there's been way too much smoke about how enamored they are with Anthony Richardson and and Will Levis. It's gonna be one of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, the other team that's kind of like, and I'm going to throw this out here. I think this is a hot take. I think another team who's a dark horse, Baltimore Ravens. Um, yeah, I mean, if, it, if these contracts don't work, don't work out. This can call well, so, so, and I was thinking about this last night. I'm like, okay, and they keep saying, we want to get a deal done with, with Lamar. You want to get a deal done with Lamar. But if you see one of the, like, if you see Anthony Richardson sliding, like, if he, like, if, let's say Indianapolis goes with Levis, Anthony Richardson sliding. I mean, if I'm Baltimore, I'm calling Philadelphia, right? I'm and seeing yeah. what they want for what do we want, right? Like trying to trade up for Anthony Richardson, or seeing, you know, let's say for example, okay, so here's here's another working theory I was looking at, like Lamar, you need to like if I'm Atlanta, right, and I see that like I'm getting pieces, or if I'm like if I like if I'm Atlanta and I see okay Anthony Richardson sliding, I'm calling Baltimore and telling them, hey. I'll give you eight. I'll give you my first round pick next year and another one. Give me Lamar Jackson. If I'm Baltimore, I'm seriously considering that because, you know, that deal hasn't gotten done. And it's just like, man, like, we need to get moving. We need to get our guys going. Like, you know, let's see what happens. But, I, I you know, I do think Baltimore is another dark horse team that people are going to have to keep an eye on because, I mean, Eric DaCosta is one of the best in the NFL when it comes to, you know, moving up and down the draft board. So he, um, he always hits on these picks, so he's you know he's one to watch there. The Vikings are another one. Um, if you're looking at another potential back here, New Orleans is very interesting um, because they got Derek Carr. They have a late first round pick. And Nobody I trusts believe... Derek Carr, and the New Orleans Saints love to trade with yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, they do. Oh God. Like yeah, New Orleans. <laughs> well. So New Orleans. So the other thing with New Orleans is they don't have. How many, I got to see what the draft order is. But I like. I think when we were on last time, I was looking at like teams that had multiple second round picks. I believe Detroit, Seattle was one of them. Detroit was another one. Pittsburgh was another one. And the other thing I think we can't rule out is like if and you know I know how he likes Jalen Carter, but let's say Jalen Carter slides to ten, and let's say Detroit's like, hey, we want Jalen Carter. Give we'll give you two second round picks plus our first this year for your first to take Jalen Carter. If I'm Howie Roseman, I'm taking that, right? Because we still get the pick in the first round, and then we yeah. also get more depth to get guys in the second, right? So like, I don't think we can rule out that situation of okay, one of those top ten talents slides. There's a team who's willing to pay their weight in gold. Take it. Well, I think so, I think that's the I think the big question is like because we clearly have holes at linebacker, holes at safety. And uh, I, mean, I guess a little bit, and a whole uh, offensive guard. So it's like, does 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 Howie go with the same strategy and just like does he go does he go back and does he does he go for more picks or does he go for like uh, does he push the can back next year? You know, I, I, I think you have you have to plug you have to plug talent this year, right? Because your team it, is in win now mode, right? Like best more picks, best player available. We had talked before about. Um, Buda Baker, do you think there's any chance that we trade for Buda Baker in this draft? Yeah, I mean, if we can get uh, one of those early second round picks, I think we can get him. 
right? Go get an extra second round pick and then use that on Buda Baker. That would be like. He's under contract for the next two years. Yeah, his well, his contract. He's his on a rookie deal, right? He's ah, no, 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 no. They re-upped him. Yeah, never mind. Sorry. So I mean, Buda Baker. Sure so that's. Yeah, he's under contract for like the next two years, but he wants to like he wants a new deal because he like he wants the security of it. That's what I think. Um, I don't, I we I might mean, even be able to afford his deal at this point with with uh, with Jalen's new contract. Well, so the, could, but... as long as it so doesn't if, hamstring us like Devonte. If I'm so if I'm Howie Roseman, if let's say if the Cardinals come to me and say, "Hey, Buda Baker for pick number 30, dude, game on," I would yeah, take right? that in a heartbeat. Buda Baker, give me. I will give you. So if I'm if I'm Howie Roseman, I go to the Cardinals and I say, "I want one. In, I'll give you one in a, like a late round pick. Give me Buda Baker and pick 34." Well, well, I I loved what how he did last year with AJ Brown. Give me more of that. Just use a first round pick on like a, an established star in the league. You know? I, I, yeah. I mean, I well, it's got it's got to be a late first round pick though. Yeah, yeah, Cause, yeah, yeah. Because like it's harder. Like to me, that pick thirty. Like that's that's where I think you could swap it for like a proven NFL contributor. Like a, like an a, the AJ Brown situation was insane. How how he was able to get that. Yeah, um, yeah honestly. But, yeah, and now it looks like an absolute steal because A.J. Brown is a bona fide number one wide receiver that we've needed for years. I mean, um, the Titans fired their GM after it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Buda so, Baker, by the way, his cap is 16 million this year. 16, okay. Well, don't we have like don't we have like 25 million in cap space or something right now? Yeah, we got something like that, but that, that's a lot to spend on a safety. And he a wants... lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot on a safety. When I see like Julian Love being locked up for like two years, eight million per year. I mean, I mean, CJ only wanted like twelve, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't get me started on that. We should have um, signed it, dude. Like it was ridiculous. I was so yeah. stupid. You got eight million dollars um, for one year deal. Like you could have easily just did that. I mean, he's an idiot for signing with Detroit. He should have just waited and signed with us. You know, like he could have still been a free agent now if he really wanted to. There was no pressure to like. He didn't have to sign. So, in. in you know, to the to the other point about pick thirty, right? Being kind of like the wild card pick here. So, the other scenario I've seen is Seattle. They own multiple second round picks, right? If they there's a QB out of Tennessee right now who's been gaining some traction, Hendon Hooker, um, as like a a draft a draft and stash guy at the back end of the first round. So if Seattle comes to me and says, "Hey, we want Hooker to come sit in behind Geno Smith," Geno's contract works out to be like. After year one, there's like two get out clauses. So that's, that's poor Gino, man. I well, he, dude, he's getting paid. I mean, like, I know. I, he's he's definitely never, getting money. Yeah. So Gino, I mean, Gino Smith, I think won one like from where he was getting sucked in the jaw with the Jets to have to be a backup True. for like two years to get like 120. He got like so, guaranteed, I think, right? Yeah, he's he's set for life. I think that's what he needed. Um. So the other situation that's been banded around is one of one of like Oakland or you know maybe a Seattle you know looks at pick thirty and says okay here's a second here's a third give us your pick thirty we're gonna go take a a developmental QB like a Hendon Hooker right and own his fifth year option so we let him we sit him on the bench for like one two years let him learn and then when he takes over for the vet cool we have him for three guaranteed years. That's that's kind of the other thing that's been well, around, and I I could see I think it. I could really see Seattle. one of those teams doing that. So Seattle right now has thirty. So I'm looking at their second round picks right now. They've got thirty seven fifty two. Um, it would be sort of like a Jordan Love situation. Yep, nailed it. So let me see what we got. Seattle's got five twenty thirty seven fifty two. They have so many. The picks Raiders, of Ross, yeah. So the Raiders picks. own. Th- the Raiders the on 38. Um, they've got 70 as well in the third round. Uh, sorry, let me see this. I'm like, so that's yeah, a high third got, round pick, right? That's basically second. Yeah, basically they've got a high third rounder. So if the Raiders come to me and say, "Hey, here's our high third, here's our high second, give us your first. We want to go draft a developmental quarterback." I'm down I'm with Howie that. Rose, yeah, if I'm Howie Roseman, I'm like, okay, done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling um, you, the more the more picks Howie has, so he can just draft like six offensive linemen in like the fourth, fifth, and sixth round over the next two years, and just let Stoutland go to work. I think the better, you know. I, I actually well, so, agree with that, dude. 
but we like, need positional like positional depth best matchup. player positional depth best player available yes so that's yeah that should be the draft strategy right and it's not like oh my god oh my god we need to trade for like a guy to fill a need no like we've done that so many times and we've ended up with players who just like they were supposed to fill a need and they weren't so i i've got a scenario for you for both of you guys you're at 10 and nobody yeah. wants to trade back with you and Bijan is there jalen carter's there witherspoon christian gonzalez um lucas van ne- or van ness and skaronski they're all there who do you choose I think if if Carter, all, f- right? I wouldn't touch Dalen Carter. Yeah, I mean I know people don't like him because he's a draft pick. But yeah, I don't I mean, know if I would touch Dalen Carter either. Just say character flaws, but other than well, that, you know, I don't know. So the case, okay, so the case for Jalen Carter to coming to the Eagles is actually very interesting, and, and I was reading up on this last night. So Jordan, so Jordan Davis and Jacoby Dean were teammates with him at Georgia. Mm-hmm. The rolling, the rumor around the league is if Jalen Carter were to go to the Eagles, the one person who they believe could keep him in, could keep Jalen Carter in line is Jordan Davis. Um, you add that Jacoby Dean is the other one who keeps him in line, and that's on top of what Fletcher and Brandon Graham would do. Now, that's true. We've been a, I feel like if anybody has a rock solid locker room, it's the Eagles. It's the Eagles, yeah. The Eagles would, I think, you know, with the the character stuff aside and, like, the combine results, like, weren't where they were supposed to be. Like, I think he showed up, like, 10% overweight, which was bad. But if there's one team that could, like, keep him in line, I think it's us, right? Just given the structure of our defensive line and, like, that could potentially unlock his talent. Now, for me, right, personally, if I'm an NFL GM, right, and I'm looking at, I have pick 10, I want to, I need to get the best talent available for my team. If you're looking at it from a talent perspective, like, like, which is what I want the Eagles to do, Jalen Carter should be the pick, right? But the risk for you getting nothing out of that 10th overall pick is just so high with what's been going on with him, right? Whereas if I look at, like, a Peter Skaronsky, right, who's, you know, he could, he, he could slide to guard, and then when Lane potentially retires, right? Skaronsky could, could take over that blind side. I think he's an option. Lucas Van Ness, like, I was looking at his tape last night. The dude's a mini TJ, a J, or, uh, the dude's I was a mini say, TJ Watt. Is he, the next, is he the next Watt, dude? Yes. Dude, no, no, no. no. The, the craziest stat was, so he's, he wasn't even first string over there, one. Two, yeah, right? N- not being first string, he still put up double-digit sacks. If I'm not mistaken, let me. I can fact check myself on that. But I was reading that last night too on him, and I was just like, "Wait a second, why isn't anyone talking about this?" Um, and, and dude, his motor does not stop. Like if you look at all those plays, man, he will not stop until the play is over. And I love that about his game. So the traction last night was how he was trying to move up to get Jalen Carter. If they can't, if they can't, right, then the pick becomes Lucas Van Ness, right, because we. We lost Javon Hargrave. We've lost. We, we're kind of we're a little bit light on the pass rushing side. So like, he becomes the pick. If Gonzalez is on the board, I think that's something you have to consider. I don't think Gonzalez, Gonzalez is really good. Him. Well, yes. I see. see I wouldn't Bijan's think Gonzalez was Bijan's on the board. Bijan is still there, but I would still take Lucas Van Ness over Bijan. There's quite a few players time. who I think are just one tier above Bijan potentially. Even though I think yeah. it. it so, Harsha, if you knew that Bijan was going to end up at the same level as Ladanian Tomlinson, would you take him at 10? Yes. <laughs> so, LT was drafted fifth overall. Um, so, if you're telling me I'm getting a top five pick for at the cost of a, just a 10th overall pick, then yes. Yeah. Right. Like, but I, like, here's the thing, though. You can't put, like, we, like, it's... it's LT's one of the best running backs ever. It's tough to say he's going to be LT. He's really, like, top exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, and, and you know, the, I'm trying to think. Who is the like? If you're gonna tell me I get a like a top three running back ever, right at the tenth overall pick, like yeah, sign me up. I'm gonna do it. But, <laughs> yeah. but right, like with the whole the holes I see on our roster, I just like, and I might be putting a need based approach here, but like I feel like there's a better mix of like best player available and need, right, combined together, which is the D line or the O line. Yeah. yeah, I would like I said earlier. I, I wouldn't be mad at, at, at padding the O line a little bit. Like it's never a bad thing. Like there's always going to be games that guys are like beat up for or 
stuff like that. It's good to have some guys that you can just plug in and not worry about them. But I don't know, man. Like, just I don't know. It, it could be just fan talk because, like, as a fan, it's like, or as a GM, you have to obviously like, if a guy goes down and the offensive line is screwed the whole year, there goes the year, really. So it's like, it's it's, it's a tough call. Right. I um. um so Jackson, sorry not to jump in here, but Nolan Smith is also the other edge guy that's drawn some traction with the Eagles, and this is for Peter King of SI. Peter King's very plugged into what the like what the. Draft well, that's what on the Ringer there. they have him drafting Nolan Smith too. Yeah. Um, which makes sense. Like I do the edge rusher from Georgia, pair him up. Like that's fine. I have no issue with that. Um, I think that's a smart pick too. I think um, you know how he loves his edge rushers and. Mm-hmm. BG's gonna BG's getting old. I don't know. It I do you think we need an edge rusher if Barnett comes back rejuvenated? I think the entire world has written Derek Barnett off as a bust. But I mean like he's been injured for two years. He could potentially come back and like have like, you know, mentally matured and like I not be problem. getting a so I think I think I, I understand that he might be rusty coming off, but I think maybe he's gonna come back, not get penalized every five plays. And like be like an actually like good contributor on offense or, or on defense. I don't know. I feel like we with with BG with him, with Sweat with uh with uh, Hassan Reddick. I feel like we have like a pretty solid like string of four defensive ends. I get that like we're probably going to lose BG at the end of the year. Do you think it's worth it drafting defensive? I guess it's always worth drafting defensive end. It's probably a stupid question. Yeah, I mean it's like defensive end. You can always kind of just have them. You can't really have too many of them, but like we do have. Four of them, so like, I guess I don't know. I guess you're kind of right. We do, we do have some depth there. Or is so, is, is this on Reddick even defensive end? What am I talking about? Isn't he isn't he linebacker? He's like an OLB like hybrid pass rusher where like they could like stand him up if they need to, or they could put him on the line and let yeah, him rush. He doesn't, he doesn't really ever like. He's not going to be on the same side as you know as BG. So it's like yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we do need. I guess he's like a well, he lined up he lined up get... on the line more than often than he... not last year. You know? Guys, get a get a load of this. Sorry. So on edge rushers, I'm looking at this right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Lucas Van Ness was the second most productive pass rusher coming out this year. So get a load of this. Mm-hmm. He had eight sacks this past season and 271 pass rush snaps. A sack every 33.9 snaps. Jalen Carter was 91 every a sack every 91 snaps. Nolan Smith was 51. Miles Murphy was 35.6. And the only player above Van Ness was Will Anderson. See, I think, what about a scenario where we um, draft somebody, whoever, at a 10, and then trade up to the 20s for, like, Van Ness if he's sliding? I don't think Van Ness is going to slide. That's the thing. I think he's one you of don't? those, like, okay. no, I, I, if we trade down, I would, I would want us to stay at, like, between 15 and 20, but I don't think we're going to have a shot at Van Ness. I think Van Ness goes top 15. It, it, some of the stuff I'm seeing on this guy is just like he's he's someone who like he's fly he's like he started late but he's moving up the boards like slowly because like teams are starting to realize like yo this guy's like he is something. Well, that's why I, I think doesn't he have like triple the sacks of somebody going top ten and like yeah. like <laughs> that's that's I mean that's not good for he's, that person. Yeah, he's I mean Van Ness is one. Um, you know I I wouldn't. <sighs> It, it, to me, like personally, to me, it, we either stay, like if we stay at ten, I think we it's got to be at like the positional priority and then best player available, D end, um, O line, and then it like by let's say by chance, right? Like Atlanta takes a takes a guy, Chicago takes one of our guys. If we're at ten, and the decisions between Bijan, Christian Gonzalez, or um, maybe like one of the lower tier D linemen. That's when I think you have like you go best player, like you you stick with the best player available approach, but like you draft either a running back or a CD because they're just that far ahead of you know what's underneath them, right? Because you're still going yeah. with best player available. I I honestly think it might go Gonzalez yeah. over Bijan in that situation, just because I think getting like a lockdown corner that's young, like a Sauce Gardner or something, or like a Marshawn Lattimore would be like. Huge. So beneficial for this team. Yeah, um, especially I, in the division we play in, right? Because we're going to see multiple wide receiver sets, right? If you're looking at Dallas, yeah. 
CD. I mean, Mike Gallup's still there, right? Yeah, it's it's. I think it's nice that our backs that we have right now are oh, like no, really sure. good because uh, they're just old. We're gonna we're gonna be screwed in two years. I think if we don't draft a corner. Mm-hmm. No, it makes yeah. sense. Corners like um, have, my question. Like, so many years. <laughs> yeah. And my question for you guys is like, I feel like the linebackers, we could easily pull like, or, and even like the safeties, like we might, I think we could pull a situation like we did last year where like the month before training camp starts, we sign like Jaqueski Tart and uh, Kaiser White and we just roll them into camp and like kind of like have them play because they're serviceable enough and I would deal with them as like, I, I don't, just kind of like a band aid for a year. I mean, it's in Kobe Dean, and who's going to be a starter beside him? Exactly. Like, I don't think yeah. we have anybody else, really. There's a kid out of Iowa uh, who I want them to keep. And I don't, and we normally don't draft um, linebackers that high. I think that Kobe Dean was, like, the highest linebacker I think we've drafted in a while. There's yeah. a kid coming out of Iowa who I think would be a really good compliment um, to Nicobe Dean. His name's Jack Campbell. He's been, I've seen him mocked, like, late first round, second. So that's why, like, if we do trade down, we get a late first round pick, we land, you know, best player available, like a later first round pick, land best player available. And then with that early second round, or even the latter part of the second round where we have the other pick, get a linebacker to just plug and play um, alongside Nicobe Dean. Because I like, I think Nicobe Dean can run our defense. He called the signals for Georgia um, and was their team captain. But you're going to need a thumper alongside him because Nicobe Dean is undersized for the linebacker position. Yeah, totally. Um, no, I think, you know, final takeaways, guys. Let's, um, I think, let's go where we are right now, the two players you'd like to see the Eagles take. So we're sitting at 10 and 30. No trades, right? Who would you like us to take? Jackson. All right, so I'm going to say what I would like. Or I'm going to, all right, all right. So I think I would like, I honestly, I want to give my credit to Brian Branch. I think we need safety. I think it would be really cool if we could get him in the first round. But I think, um, you had mentioned previously, Harsha, that you think he might be able to slip into the second round and we could get him. So I'm going to, in this scenario, I'm hoping that happens and Brian Branch is slipping. I'm going to predict something crazy. Oh, God. I'm going to, I'm saying Bijan at 10. I think that Howie has, I don't know, just the way that Bijan is talking. I think how he's leading him on, and if he ha- isn't going to draft him, then he is a bastard, and he's going to break this kid's heart. So I think he's gonna, <laughs> I think he's drafting Bijan at ten, and then for some reason, I think Jalen Carter is going to slip all the way to us at thirty. So there's been rumors, there's been rumors already of him sliding to the back half of the the back half of the top ten it's picks. It's like the Nagobi Dean all, all over again. I would not honestly. I would like, and I, I was talking to someone last night. I would not be surprised to see Jalen Carter slide to twenty. Hey, hey, a, a picture of him with a bong uh, comes out like Laramie Tunsil oh, did. God. We're getting him at thirty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So you, so Jackson, you're saying we get Jalen Carter at thirty, and then yeah. at ten overall, we get Bijan. Okay, that's my, that's my, that's my. That's uh, a hot take. That's a hot take. Okay, <laughs> Chris, take. what do you got? I don't know who we're getting at thirty, but I'd be okay with Bijan, and then I think I gotta think. Skaronski at thirty. No, 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 at ten. Uh, oh, at ten. We okay. Skaronski. He's gonna be there. Ten. I, He's I, gonna I, be there. At ten. I thought you meant oh, like. I thought you meant like the our two favorite picks for the ten pick, the ten spot. Oh, so sorry. I meant to say, who are we gonna pick at ten, and then who are we gonna pick at thirty? Oh. Give me your two players. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I didn't really think about the thirty picks too much, honestly. I thought I feel like we were gonna trade that one. Okay, you so that, that could be that could be your call. I yeah. I agree with that. Take, I think, that's I think there's a potential for a trade there. Yeah. So, I think in all scenarios, right? If I don't, if if Howie says, okay, we're just gonna go with what we have and pick, um, ten, I would like to see Lucas Van Ness be the pick, um, okay. just because I I think he'd be a great edge rushing addition. Um, I am gonna make, you know, and I think if we stay at thirty, best player available, I would like to see Jamir Gibbs. Um, okay. As the pick, or or if Brian Branch is sitting there, take him, plug and play at safety. I think that's huge. Okay. I think I agree. The other See, option. Sorry, go ahead. 
I was just saying. I, I was just saying. I think harsh. I think you might actually uh, be correct. What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Well. So and, and oh, here's no, my right. thing. Well. So here's my thing with that, right? Like, so if you can land Brian Branch, right? Brian. Like, the cool thing about Brian Branch is he can come up and play the nickel. Yeah. Um, when I was reading that, like, and that's I feel like when we were on our Super Bowl run, um, we the if if we're on a Super Bowl run, like Malcolm Jenkins came down to the box, right? The Steelers have employed that with Minka Fitzpatrick. Derwin James does that for the Chargers, where he's kind of like a chess piece, right? Branch kind of played that role for Alabama, where he was the chess piece of that defense. So if we get a chess piece like that at 30 for um, Sean Desai to play around with, Sean Desai actually loved using Eddie Jackson in kind of that like chess piece role in Chicago. So I would love to see them get Brian Branch. If that doesn't happen, and this is the other scenario I was going to say. I want them to trade at least like the ideal scenario, like the ideal trade down scenario is one of the teams that's QB needy comes up, gives the Eagles one or two later round picks. We get Brian Branch later, right? And then we also add another impact player later in like the third round, or even maybe if we can get a future pick for next year, I'd be okay with that. But again, if we're going Lucas Van Ness, Brian Branch, game on. I think that's a solid draft. I think you plug holes on that defense. And then, Maybe so look get, at the running back class. Well, I, 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 I would love to get Brian Branch, who is like, and have like a chess piece safety because I feel like, as a, as, like when we were growing up, like we had Brian Dawkins was our chess piece safety, and like I always looked up, I was, I always saw, saw like Troy Polamalu and Ed Reed, and I thought they were like awesome, awesome sa- safeties, like Bob Sanders or whatever. And I think that, um, uh, like I think that uh, I think, I think, obviously Jenkins was like our chess piece for, like you're saying. And I, CJ, GJ kind of played like a little bit of a chess piece role, not 100%. I just think that like there's something like that's like a lot of people say like that, like the the middle linebacker is like the hardest defense. But for some reason, I think that like having like a chess piece safety who just like lays down some hits, like really, there's something to be said for that. I think that's the leader of the defense and you need that. I think I really would like to have that on defense. Yeah. Yeah. I think how he understands that. So. Um, no, good discussion, fellas. No, this is, uh, this is getting my draft juices going. I got to do some oh, more, yeah. uh, <laughs> strategizing. Um, you know, I, th- I think we've definitely spent a lot of time on the draft. And I, I do want to give the Sixers their props with this next topic. I think oh, yeah. we're, uh, we're definitely, I think, how are we feeling about the sweep? And then how are we feeling about, you know, potential opponents the next round? I personally love it. I think we got the business done. This is what we needed. And like I said on the show previous, my goal for these guys is Eastern Conference Game 7. If they lose on a Yes, shot Eastern Conference Game Seven. I'm not happy, but we've made it farther than we have yeah. in, in previous years, right? Like my goal for them, I want them to get to the finals. I can tolerate Eastern Conference Game Seven. That's where I'm at. What are your thoughts, guys? So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like poo-poo the team if they if they get knocked out in the second round to the Celtics. No, 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 no. no. Come uh, on, I'm gonna, man. I'm Come gonna on, be man. very disappointed. I'm gonna be very, very disappointed. I think that I want them I the to. At this I point, I want them to get out of the East. At this point, I want them to get out of the East. I think that we freaking dominated the Nets. I I understand all the WIP callers are like, oh, what can we get for Embiid if we trade him? He's not going to play in the first game or whatever. Like, he's fucking played with... A, he played with a torn meniscus two years ago. He played with a broken face and a detached thumb, like, on his actual hand that he needs to shoot with, like, last year. So like, he, he, of course, he has a sprained knee that they said is like a one week healing, like timetable to heal. He's gonna be 100 percent for the series. He's not even hurt. So like, I'm not worried about him. Beat. I think that Harden is facilitating better than anybody else in the league. I think Maxi is a serious spark plug, and the like the scoring oomph that we need. I think Tobias is coming into his own. I think that this bench is the best bench that we've had. Well, uh, in, in the football. past 10 years, B-Ball Paul is the best backup that we've had. He's actually not, like, 100%. completely letting everything in. I feel like, as we've talked about before, every time Embiid sits, uh, we give up a shitload of points, and that's the reason why we lose these playoff games. And the fact that Doc is actually playing B-Ball Paul is huge because that's preventing that from happening. Um, I love the fact that we have McDaniels because I feel like that he... Is the it's the first time we've ever had like a small like, a, like an actual small forward, rangy small forward who like He's a can cover guys. Can yep. Yeah, exactly. And like I this is just and and like I haven't even mentioned Dante Melton, who is like 
really, really, really good at defense, and he's scoring like great with our team. I don't know this. The yeah. synergy of this team is so good, and I, I'm I'm watching the Celtics lose two games to the Hawks. I'm watching the Bucks like potentially lose to uh, Jimmy Butler. Rest in peace, man. I wish he was on the team. Still, uh, literally the best playoff performance I mean, I've ever seen. Shout, days ago. shout out to Jimmy Buckets for putting a fifty-six. In God, my God, God, dude. He put he literally put the team on his back and said, "We are not losing." So Jimmy Butler, <laughs> legend. Jimmy Butler, if you ever watch this podcast, Sixers fans still love you. Yep. So uh, shouts out to Jimmy Butler. 100%. Continue, Jackson. I love Jimmy Butler. I love Jimmy Butler. I just I I yeah I I I've got I've got high hopes. I really think that we can beat the Celtics. I really don't think the Celtics have anybody that can cover Embiid, and that's a huge problem for them because Embiid's the best player in the series. Um, so <laughs> so. Yeah. so uh, so Jackson, and for the I'm first time, our bench can complete with them. So I'm going to come in there and ask you a question and come in there and say, I think a guy who hasn't gotten his credit just because his stat lines have been ugly, P.J. Tucker. Um, oh, P.J. Tucker has turned it on in the playoffs. And so the thing, like, and when I look at years past, right, guys, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, like, I feel like we we kept trying to fit around Simmons, right, because Simmons was the supposed to be the guy, like, one of the guys. It didn't work, right? And to Jackson's point about synergy, right? Like it, it does feel like we have the right guys for the right roles, right? Like we've got, like Embiid's Embiid's obviously alpha dog, right? This is Embiid's team. We know that, right? Like when we need points or we need buckets, we go to the big fella. If that's not working, we've got a guy who's a facilitator, but then can also play a little ISO ball, right? And like if you want to clear floor, if like they're gonna say, okay, we take Embiid away in the fourth quarter. Okay, like I'm comfortable with a healthy Harden can ISO up and hit a shot when I need him to. Okay, you want to take Harden away? Fine, I'll go to Tyrese Maxey and, and and you know if he's if he needs to beat a guy off the dribble and hang in the air and make a tough finish, he can go do that, right? Tyrese Maxey Max will run by your whole team or shoot a better three point percentage than anybody in the freaking league. You know exactly. Yeah, no, and I like you know it's, that's the other thing. I you know Jackson, great point where Maxey hasn't like. One of the biggest knocks on Maxi coming out was his jump shooting, and that's improved steadily over the last like two years. We've needed that, right? So you've got two guards that'll spread the floor, and bead right there, and that's also freed up the floor for Harris, right? Who can hit mm-hmm. those jump shots, right? Like, they're just, the pieces are fitting together. They're ascending at the right time, right? Like, look, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but man, like, if we lose, it would be a huge, huge disappointment if we lost. The next series, right? Like they, like oh, the the floor. The floor for me is to get to the Eastern Conference Finals, and we have a shot to go to the NBA Finals. I'm not accepting. Oh, all right, it's okay. We went to Game Seven in the second round. No, like the floor is the Eastern Conference Finals. Now here's here's the thing about that. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. That no matter what what happens, like we have to make it past the second round. Goddamn tragedy that the Celtics I think are the second best team in the East right now. Besides us, but we have to go through them, you know. Hundred percent. So we have hundred percent. Bring it on. And it sucks because, like, any other year, you, if you throw on the Hawks, like the Hawks series now with this team, wipe the floor with them. If you bring on the yep. fucking Raptors, wipe the floor with them. Like it's like the, it's if now we have to go through a Celtics team that is pretty dominant and like it's gonna be us. Probably the them. second best team in the league. That's what I'm saying. Like like they're yeah. they're up there. Like they're they're a pretty high fa- odds on favorite damn thing so but that being said if you're gonna fucking win a fucking title ever with this goddamn team you have to beat the best team it's, it's hard to we're gonna have to go through the celtics about. yep like 100 it's just how it is you have to like i mean some people are gonna say we're the underdog in that series and i can i can understand that i guess obviously, that's fine you know like like you have to fucking beat teams like if you're gonna beat the best team it doesn't matter if they're you gotta beat the best to be the best it doesn't matter so doesn't matter yep if they don't make it past the second round I don't even know what to say anymore with this team. Like, Doc it's Rivers the same is gone. Thing every year, man. Like, every Doc year. Rivers is gone. It sucks. Doc so, Rivers. Doc Rivers should. If they can, if it. if they cannot get out of the second round, Doc Rivers should be gone the next day. Like, I, I'm I'm sorry, that's just not good enough for me. Like, I am. Like, you know, guys, I think back to like, you know, and you guys are around my age, so we think back to like when the process started, right? Like, we think back to, you no, know, like when that trade was made. Twenty thirteen. But even yeah. before that, too, right, when we drafted Nerlens Noel, we swapped out Drew Holiday and said, okay, we are going to do this, right? Like, as yeah, fans. Well, well, sorry, go ahead. 
I was just gonna say I felt like the process really started for me when we traded. It. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind, never mind. I'm, I'm sorry. I only got yes. into it late. I wasn't into it at the very beginning. I got into it. I think right when we traded MCW or right as we drafted it, like Noel traded MCW. That was like when I was getting into it. Yeah. So like as Sixers fans, right? Like we've lived through what like literally intentionally losing for like five, six years, right? Where I think I watched like... every single game. Of like seven seasons in a row where we lost, like every single one of those years where we lost, like what? What did we win? Like ten games? Like three years That's in a row? I watched every single like, one of those well, games. We we fucking toiled for years. We toiled for years. like, and we sat through those years. We paid the tickets. We went there, right? And then, yeah. And we, like when Embiid stepped onto the floor after like two years of being off the court, we were like, okay, we have this guy is something, right? Like the the Instagram shots of like him shooting like. 200 uh, 300 threes and making like 280 of them like okay this guy's actually talented we got the one piece right then we got another piece another guy who we thought was going to be a piece right then we i think after that we messed around with first round picks it didn't really work the colangelo burner gate happened right like all that stuff so like to me as a fan right like i've sat through enough of this you know what like when are we going to say now is the time like, we've been saying now is the time for the past couple of years, and so I've been like, ah, you know, Simmons can't shoot. You know, we just got Harden. Like, like I mean, we had a shot to correct it with Butler. It just didn't work out. I mean, because of Simmons, whatever. I won't get into that. But point is, like, there have been so many cycles of being like, oh, yeah, we're here. Oh, okay, we're not here, but we're, we're going to keep building, right? Like, building, 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 building. Like, okay, when we keep building and staying in the same place and not going up, right, I think as fans – it's lowering our expectations, and I'm not going to tolerate that this playoff series because they are, they are good enough to make the East it, minimum minimum make the Eastern Conference Finals, right? But my like again, my floor is the Eastern Conference Finals. If we make it there, okay. If we win it and get to the finals, that to me is a successful season. That to me means Doc Rivers stays, right? If he gets us through the finals, if Doc Rivers wins us an NBA title, dude. That man can choose whenever he wants to leave the Philadelphia 76ers organization. Like, that, Eastern Conference what, Finals before, you had, like, Doc Rivers should be like, nah, we are getting to the NBA Finals this year, guys. That's what I would say this. I would say this. I think that, like, if we don't get to the Eastern Conference Finals this year and we don't lose and we, whatever, I, I, like, if we, if we lose in the second round, I'll be pissed. I'll be really pissed. But, like, if we never win a championship with this team, my disappointment will be literally. That's what I was about to- Measurable, because I feel like I feel like yeah, like we there's so many fucking goddamn casualties and bo- body like there's piles and piles of fucking processed bodies. We've got like Tony Roten, Henry Sims, fucking like Brett Brown, fucking so true. Seriously, Mike Isaiah Antonio, is there? Fucking Ja, Mike D'Antoni, Mike D'Antoni, Mike D'Antoni, Ja, Nerlens Noel. It's like it's, even say Ben, like Ben Simmons, ben Mark yeah. Paltz. Uh, oh, I forgot about Paltz. Oh my god, dude! So, Jakar no, Sampson, we what got I was like, uh, say was like, like what you said, uh, Parsha is like, it is kind of true. If we do get to the finals, like this is like a Dario say, Sarge. I wouldn't say a successful season. Dario Jimmy Sarge. Butler. Shout out to the boy, <laughs> Rashawn Holmes. <laughs> Rashawn Holmes. I wouldn't say it would be a successful season, but like, I guess Doc would stay. But like, yeah. if we get to the finals dude, this year and we don't win it. Who knows if we're getting back, dude? Like we have no. Yeah, like, that's it's, it's I'm like, with it's, that. It's crazy. Like so, like I don't know. Once we get there, I think it's like a winner die. Like winner go home, dude. Like winner die. TJ McConnell. Agreed. Oh, TJ McConnell. Shouts out to the boy TJ McConnell. He would do undrafted free. JJ Reddick. Yeah, uh, JJ Reddick's on a podcast now. Um, oh, you're killing it. Yeah, JJ Reddick to- is is to me. I'm so out on JJ Reddick because there's two sides to the coin. There's the side of J.J. Redick who roots for Joel Embiid the past two years and then this year says, hey, screw it. I'm voting for uh, Giannis for MVP. And then there is Jimmy Butler who, as the crowd shouts for him as MVP, says, you know what? The real MVP is Joel Embiid. So screw off, uh, J.J. Redick. Get your, love, have your teammates back. Love. We love you, Jimmy Butler. If you ever watch this podcast, we love you. Um, well, it, it, and if we think, like, you know, and it's funny you bring up the whole Butler situation, the Butler thing, because, like, if we think back to when Butler was dealt here, he was the perfect superstar for this town. Kind of a great It was so obvious guy. at the time. It was so yeah. obvious at the time. It made no sense why they didn't keep him. And like you, like you said, 
they were building for Simmons, and they really were building for Simmons for so many years, so stupidly, because clearly Embiid was the better player. Well, I think when when we brought Simmons, like when Simmons was drafted, right? Like the idea. Well, so okay, so when Simmons, so Britt Brown is also highly hooked up with Ben Simmons' dad. Um, those two play together. So when they hired Brett Brown, the the instinct was. Okay, we're bringing this guy because two years down the line, there's this kid coming through who could be the Australian LeBron James. And if you guys remember, like, prior to, like, after Ben Simmons joined, LeBron James was a free agent and also took a meeting with the Sixers where For, Brett Brown was. There were, there were two, two straight, I think, off seasons where we were getting hyped up because I thought LeBron was going to come to the Sixers. LeBron he almost came. Here, yeah. he, he took a meeting, but, like, that's when the Colangelo stuff was coming out. And then it was like, ah, oh, snap, he's not going to come here. But we were a mess. We were a mess. We were, we were a mess, and I don't blame Imagine him for not coming LeBron here. LeBron and fucking Joel, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. We would have gotten a championship. We would have gotten a championship. 100%. I mean, if, if we think about to, like, when Ben – like, when, back when Ben Simmons, bef- before he became what he came now, right? Like, Ben Simmons was regarded as the best prospect to come out in the last 10 years, right? Because he was supposed of, to be the next LeBron. Like, everybody he, said that. He had – well, because he had the handle of a point guard – the passing body of Magic Johnson, right? And the biggest, the biggest knock on him was the jump shot. Yeah, and even and everybody was like, at the worst, he'll be the next Magic Johnson. That's literally what they said. Yeah, but today's NBA doesn't favor a Magic Johnson skill set, right? Like that when, when Magic Johnson was around, it was the banging down low with the bigs, right? And side note, highly recommend reading Showtime by the Lakers. It's done by Jeff Perlman. I just finished that book. Great book. There's an HBO series for our listeners. Definitely go and watch it. But the Magic Johnson skill set was not built for today's NBA. Today's NBA is positionless basketball where guys need to be able to shoot threes and defend all five positions. Ben Simmons could do that, but he couldn't shoot threes, right? He, to all. me, well, the biggest red flag to me was like when he wasn't progressing, right? Like regardless of regardless you of see Maxie, coaching, I, I was just after Maxie's like a clear ascent from game. like 30% yeah. to 45% basically from three, it's like it's, it just makes it so obvious that Ben Simmons wasn't putting in any effort, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, to your point exactly, Jackson, there was no progression, right? Because the jump shot, like, correcting a jump shot is the easiest thing to do. Maxi is one use case. Derrick Rose was another one. And he corrected his jump shot so much that he became the MVP of the league. Yeah. Right? So, that's set aside. We were trying to build around Simmons. Then when it became clear that he wasn't improving, we kept trying to build around him, right? And then we got Butler. And then I think that off season, it would, Butler basically said, "Okay, it's either me or Ben Simmons." They went with Ben Simmons because Brett Brown was still there, right? Well, remind me. Well, when no, we, I think we... Ben Simmons said it's either me or Butler because I think I think I'm I think Butler was playing with playing with Simmons. I think Simmons didn't want Butler. Was the listen, situation? Listen, listen. Remind uh... me, did we already have Toby signed when Butler was not was here? We no, dealt with, we, yeah, it was we dealt it was Toby. Yeah, we had them both the same exact season, um, and then we ended up signing Toby over Butler was right. the thing. Giant mistake. Well, we, Don't understand it. That's okay. At the know. time, but the thing is, at the time, it was a fucking massive mistake. It was so clear to everybody. Yeah. Because Butler was like, Butler had the YouTube channel with everybody from the Sixers. He was like hanging out with like the people in the locker room, like the actual like staff of like the Sixers team, and he was. I don't know. I just I thought that man literally embodied Philadelphia, and it made absolutely no sense did, why dude. we would not he resign him. Did. Ben Simmons, like I said, ruined fucking everything. Like the guy wouldn't even. The guy was literally afraid to do his job. Like he was afraid to shoot a basketball. Like I don't get it. Like, we've, we've, we've talked this nauseum like the last couple of years, but like I can't believe that guy. I'm so glad we've knocked out his team in fourth game. I mean, what a piece of work, dude. We, 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 we he's the only freaking supposed to star besides Mike like Mikael Bridges on his team and he won't even play in the playoffs because he's got this back strain that he got oh, two years ago. My ass for, got strain. And be played with a broken him. face and a torn off thumb. Are you kidding me? You got a back strain. Uh, that's a joke. Yeah, so so Jackson, you were absolutely right. It was kind of a mixture of Simmons basically saying, I don't want this guy anymore. Get him out of here. And management complied with that because they thought Simmons was going to be the anchor of their franchise for the next couple of years. And it was such yeah, a mistake. It is such a mistake, like that we got rid of Butler. And I, I would also say too that that front office messed I, we haven't even gotten into Markel Fultz, right? And how Markel like, Fultz was so clearly somebody who had an injury and they made it seem to the entire public 
like he was like an idiot who couldn't shoot anymore. Like he got the uh, the whatever, like the yips or whatever. But like it's, it was cl- it was clearly documented by doctors that he had actual nerve nerve injuries and they would not like put out reports to like show that he was actually injured or like give him anything. It was like crazy. And then they just traded. They just gave up on like a second round, but for uh, the fucking first round pick first overall or whatever in like two so, seconds. I- so the working theory, there's a Deadspin article on this. You guys can look this up later. Apparently, so after he declared, right, he does the pre-draft workouts and stuff, and then before the draft, there's a period, right? It is motorcycle well- incident, right? So it's either a motorcycle incident or it's a BMX incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was off road he was off road biking, right? And he and he crashed. And he crashed because it's well known that he's a, an adrenaline junkie. They've never been able to confirm it because I think there's some there's some issues with like. I don't think he confirmed it. I don't think he wanted them to know. He didn't, and because if they did, then that's a vi- then he would have slid down the draft board and lost well, a and, lot of money. And also, not only that, um, there was like these. Uh, I, it's so strange because there was in the same summer. I remember he got in the crash, but it was, uh, like the crash was after we already drafted him, I think. And there was like a video of him, like he got like a new shooting coach, and he was like laying on the ground, like flat on the on his back, shooting like a medicine weighted medicine ball up. Like to try and get like a new form, like yeah. after summer league, he started doing that, and then you could tell like after that he was like he just was doomed. Yeah. It's, it, he 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 still can't <laughs> shoot. Like clearly he has some nerve problems. I was gonna say to add insult to injury, he's Boston. Pretty, like, tr- decent year this year. I mean, not, no, nowhere where you thought he was, but compared to the draft, he's pretty good. He's, he's a good player. He's gonna be Wait, a decent but, player, but he'll never be worth the number no, one overall never. pick. That, that, it, yeah. it's such a shame NBA, because yeah. Markel yeah. Fultz was the perfect prospect for our team and he's such a nice guy and he's still such a good player we if we didn't trade him he would be a very beneficial piece to have on like our on our bench team. like there was no reason to trade him at the time we traded him for literally like 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 what did we trade him for uh who was it uh like jonathan richardson at, oh yeah jonathan at, else for like I that was got, like at yeah. the time, they literally just got him off the roster because they didn't want to get have him on the roster. They got nothing in return for him, and that was the most asinine move I've ever fucking seen in my life. I, I, I'm actually straight up angry at the team for doing that. So I, I think it, it came down to like him wanting out, like j- like them being like, "This just isn't working. You need a new change of scenery. Go to a small market team and figure it out." And I think he has with the Orlando Magic. I think he, you know, yeah. he's gonna have a, a, a you know productive NBA career. But I think us as Sixers fans, like. Man, we expected a lot more from the guy who was in the one overall pick. And the guy, we sacrificed, you know, future first-round picks and also sacrificed Jason Tatum. And, I mean, Jason Tatum's now the MVP of the league, not to add salt into the wound. Yeah, I mean, but, like, Jason Tatum would have been perfect alongside Simmons and Embiid. I mean, the fact that – just the fact that they they drafted Simmons and then avoided drafting Tatum to draft Fultz, who they were later just going to drop to uh, drop a year later for absolutely nothing because they didn't feel like dealing with him. And then – they drafted Michael Bridges and traded him for a Zaire Smith, who they also just said yeah. screw it and got rid of him two years later because they didn't want to deal with it. Just three years of just wasted, literally like top two yeah. first first overall picks, and then like what what was the next one? Like twelve? Like come on, like. Well, Br- Bridges was also like he. I mean, look at what he's doing now. That's like there have been multiple shots for them to get this thing right, right? I think, and that goes to my frustration of this year, where it's like it looks like we have things right. And like they need to produce, right? There's no excuse of like, ah, we're still dealing with all of this. So we have no right to still be comp- competitive. It's the only the only reason we are still competitive is because Joel Embiid is one of the best basketball players to ever play the game. Probably top five overall or top ten overall, whatever. But like, yeah, probably not five. But like top ten, <laughs> top ten overall. Like, I, I hey, top five points per game overall. He's a top five points per game uh, in career overall. So Correct. whatever. Yeah, he needs to get a championship. So, so yeah, he needs, needs a cha- he needs a champ. He can't. He has yeah. no claim to top ten overall unless he gets past the second round, which is the unfortunate thing. Right. Yeah, but that's that's the harsh thing about the league. The other reminiscing part I'm going to say about this is um, there were rumors coming out. So Colangelo was the GM at the time when we picked Fultz over Tatum. Yeah. Two days before, I think like a week before the draft, there were rumors coming out that Brand and Ned Rucker wanted Colangelo to work out Jason Tatum one more time. Is that like I think the the player personnel staff um, was like, hey, we need to take a serious second look at Jason Tatum because there's something here. Colangelo yeah. overruled them, 
and said, no, we are drafting Markel Fultz. Shut up. Mr. Big Collar? That was, that <laughs> what he says, apparent, guys? Well, that's the apparent rumor on the street. I don't know if that's, that's the case. There's, that's there's articles on that where it was like, hey, you know, we're – we're gonna. We're just going with Markel Fultz, right? And again, articles on this. It's rumors. I mean, it's lost in history now. But I think that you know, as fans, we've just had to live through so much dysfunctional stuff, right? Through the process where, I mean, if we don't have him beat, I mean, dude, we could look be looking at twenty years of the process. Like, I, if really we honest. don't, if yeah. if we don't have him beat, yeah, like it, it, it's it's not gonna be a it's good scary. situation. It's That's scary. What, that's why when I hear these WIP callers, I'm like, what are these? What kind of what kind of drugs are these people on? Because like, it, it, we he's the best player we've had like clearly in, since AI, and yeah. like he might be better than AI. So like, he's what's what's going? He is the current. He is the current reigning MVP. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like, we want to trade him. Yeah, like somebody's he's the current reigning MVP, and somebody called into WIP and said we need to trade him, but I don't know what we could get for him. What? You could get like what, six yeah. first round picks if you, you wanted to trade them. Whatever you wanted. You could <laughs> <laughs> name your price. <laughs> well, so, okay. So, the okay, reigning I mean, MVP. I'll, That's I'll like trading Patrick Mahomes and be like, what do you want for him? I don't know what we can get. <laughs> Maybe so, be a, Patrick Mahomes, give me a third round pick. <laughs> so, guys, guys, let me, let me come in here for a sec. So, if you're that, if you are going to, and, and I am not in favor of this, we keep MB till the day that man says, I don't want to play basketball yeah. anymore. That's how I look at it. But, but, let's say the Dallas Mavericks come in and say, oh, okay, you want to you want to entertain trading Embiid? Okay, we'll give you Luka Doncic straight up. Would you do that? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't. Interesting. Okay. The same thing with him. Like... I think Luka Doncic is good. Uh, I He's putting up some historical think... numbers down in Dallas. So was it? Yeah, Luka. Let's let's be honest. Luka Doncic is an absolute legend and insanely good, and probably also going to be like on the same trajectory as Embiid. He's one of the best players in the league, and I think he's going to end up being like top twenty all time. But I just think positionally, right now with our team, it doesn't make as much sense because he. I feel like we'd have him and Harden. It just doesn't make as much sense. Also, I'm not. I'm just not gonna like trade the superstar for superstar, like just to see if it works. You know, like <laughs> true, true. No, no, no. Just, you know? <laughs> I want. I just want to entertain what the WIP caller said. I mean, they, that's, I, that's what they said. Yeah, you, I mean, they, they <laughs> trade and beat. I mean, well, not not like yeah. not for yeah. Doncic, Oh, I like, thought you meant the, the Doncic thing. Okay, okay. No, 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 not yeah, the Doncic thing. But like, I, there obviously could be corresponding moves. But you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very interesting idea because I am a huge fan of Luka Doncic. No, um, Doncic is great. Incredible. Doncic is great. Yes, Doncic is great. So, all right, fellas, all right. I think we're we're actually an hour and thirty minutes over. Um, so yeah. we'll do. I totally forgot. You know, we want to keep this to an hour. But um, any final thoughts on you know the Sixers? Otherwise, we can uh, wrap up here. Uh, um, I'm t- yeah. I'm just frankly surprised the Celtics actually lost two so far to the Hawks. Um, That's also huge. Yeah, hopefully they continue to lose more. That makes me think they're not as good as tomorrow, people right? have been saying, and that we actually could have like a really good chance against them. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw it. I'm not even worried about the Celtics. We're gonna kick their ass. I agree. Sorry. Um, I think for me, it's all right. On to the second round. Whoever we play against, just go hard, right, right. and make sure we continue to keep balling, right? Like one, se- one game, one series at a time. The floor is the Eastern Conference Finals. The ceiling and the expected result is at least getting to the NBA Finals, right? NBA Finals, anything goes, anything happens. But if if Doc Rivers gets us to the NBA Finals, dude, Finals are bust. Like, if we are there, like Britt said, we have to win. Right? And as is Philly tradition, I think we will get to the Finals and lose. <laughs> huh. Dude, Come if, on, we go, if we have four teams, <laughs> four teams lose in the Finals this year, I don't know what I'll do, dude. I might have to take a break. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, take a break from sports. Uh, take a break from Philly sports. Um, no, we we get into every finals this year and lose, and then next year we go to all of them and win. How about that? It's so tragic that like tour. every single team is like this like you know finals caliber team, and the Flyers is like dog shit lottery. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, even all, right. all right, fellas, I think we can uh, we can wrap up here. But now this is a fun pod, obviously down four men, so we have down our fourth man, Caputi. Shouts out to the boy, Caputi. Uh, 
Uh, You'll be back yeah. next week. Back next week. Be back next week. Our favorite uh, Canelo Alvarez lookalike. So we have <laughs> launched and landed. Launched and landed. How we don't <laughs> look it up. <laughs>